Hey, what's up? I'm David Kobos, and I'm here with my partners, Brandon Shimp and Levi DeHoyos, and we re represent the David L. Herschel Department of Engineering. We will be presenting to you our research project on tuft flow visualization and measurement. Our inspiration for this research lies in pictures like this, a tree being blown away by an extremely severe hurricane. We looked at this photo and asked ourselves, is there any way to know the speed of this wind by observing the deformation occurring within the tree? The answer to our question is yes. With a bit of research involved, it is possible to measure the velocity of the fluid, or in this case, wind, affecting our body or tree. By using an experimental method to visualize aerodynamics of the tree, we can gather data required to answer a question. And now for Brandon Shimp to take the stage. Thank you, David. So as we mentioned in the title of our project, we will be going over the subject of tough flow. So the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research National Aerospace Laboratories defines tough flow as a technique used to capture the instantaneous flow pattern formed by the tough stuck onto the model surface. So this picture to the left is of a car which is being used as a tough flow model and it's, it is covered in tufts or thin pieces of string. And these strings, when subjected to wind, or in this case, whenever the car starts to drive, will begin to shift. And it's the shifting that visualizes the aerodynamics that are acting around the body of the car. And so using this concept, we can visualize the deformation of different pieces of string and uh, given a velocity of fluid flow. And so this picture shows the experimental flume here at Angelo State and it is typically used to study hydrology and hydraulic systems given that the water is flowing through an open channel. So we will be using this to visualize tough flow looking at pieces of monofilament. Our research team recalled Hooke's law, which says that the deflection is equal to P times L over E times A, where P is equal to the applied force, L is equal to the length, E is the modulus of elasticity, and A is the cross-sectional area. And so using these components of this equation, we are able to figure out which factors are going to be relevant to our experiment. And those factors include the dimensions of the model, the materialistic properties of the model, the properties of the fluid, and the velocity of the fluid. Now here's Levi de Hoyos. For our initial test, we made acrylic boards that could be installed into the experimental flume. The idea was to install a monofilament fishing line onto the board and measure its deformation in a constant flow by taking before, during, and after side view images. However, we quickly realized that any data ga gathered from this experiment would not be usable. That is because, due to the cylindrical nature of the monofilaments, the fluids deform the bodies in three dimensions rather than the two we are able to capture, which, leads up, which led us to the decision that flat laminate samples would be better for testing. Therefore, we started by simulating this shape in Autodesk Inventor Nastran, which allowed us to see how the body would deform. We had four variations of the simulation in order to find the most realistic. Our plans moving forward are to complete the simulation by integrating the fluid using Autodesk, Autodesk CFD, or Computational Fluid Dynamics, with the existing structural simulation seen on the left. We will then make a physical experiment based on this simulation and attempt to match it to its virtual counterpart. This project is what is known as an inverse problem, meaning we have the effects and are attempting to calculate the cause. Although the project is still being completed, each of us have learned an abundance about what it is going to take to solve, like using the experimental flume and Autodesk programs and how to create simulations. Thank you for listening.